In the Pits is partnered with Compete. Compete is a Texas-based brand by Jell Stewart of professional team AC Diesel that provides custom jerseys, pants, headbands, straps, tech shirts, and any other soft goods to help individuals and teams compete at the highest level. Support Texas Paintball and message Compete on Facebook or Instagram and mention In the Pits podcast for 10% off your entire order. In the Pits is partnered with Paintball Kumite. Paintball Kumite is a program designed by Colt Roberts of professional team San Antonio X-Factor to take paintball players of all ages, experience levels, and skill groups and mold them into champions. The program breaks the game down into small, easy-to-learn sessions designed to help you master the fundamentals so that you can elevate your game. Newcomers to the program get a free one-hour introductory class when mentioning In the Pits. To sign up for a class, message at Paintball Kumite on Instagram. In the Pits is partnered with Get That Shot. Get That Shot now offers first-in-line photo and video editing, 20% off Get That Shot merch, and 20% off prints to all teams that wear the Get That Shot logo on their jersey. Message Get That underscore Shot on Facebook or Instagram to become a Get That Shot program team. Welcome everyone to episode 21 of In the Pits Paintball Podcast. This podcast is focused on everything that has to do with the paintball scene here in Texas, from professional players and teams to new divisional programs, local tournament series, field owners, Texas-based brands, even photographers and videographers. Every week we'll have a short and sweet episode with a new topic and a new special guest. I'm Christian Smith. I'm a player for the Texas Titans, and this episode we are going In the Pits with Nick Mays, owner of the Mason's PB Store. Nick, how are you doing this evening? Good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. So, uh, Nick, for those listening, they maybe don't know so much about you personally. Uh, how long have you been involved in the Texas paintball scene? So I moved here straight out of college in 2015, summer 2015, uh, kind of jumped right in. I played NCPA at Miami of Ohio. So came down here and, uh, looked to jump right into it. Great. Um, kind of throughout your time in NCPA, uh, was that your kind of like first experience in the tournament scene yeah so it the, this whole thing even the, the business and me playing kind of happened accidentally if you will i uh i was a big golfer in high school and went to college thinking i would walk on and play division one golf and met the team met the guys and didn't want anything to do with that for four years and uh i've always been in sports and competitive stuff so i just couldn't uh, i couldn't do nothing for a while i walked around the club sports fair at miami and there was this guy, uh, Rob Mann, shout out Rob, uh, sitting at the table. He's about, fi- he about five foot six, gold chains, big oversized t-shirt. Your classic paintball player. Rob is like drips OG paintball. And uh, and I was like, hey, we could play paintball. That could be fun. Having never played it before besides the odd birthday party. And one thing led to another, and here we are. So um, that, was, that was where I got started. And Rob showed me the ropes, how to play. And... Uh, I ended up spending my entire college career at Miami playing and running the team for the last two years. So, well, that's actually uh, very similar to my origin story with the Texas Longhorns. I oh, yeah, never, yeah, never played uh, in high school or anything. Even though I had X Factor like literally down the street from my parents' house, um, just never got into the tournament scene until college, and then uh, I kind of took over. Uh, I also was in charge of the Texas Longhorns for last couple of years before I graduated. So very similar stories there. So, uh, yeah, Nick, well, I hope the NCPA makes a comeback. COVID really, I mean, COVID killed a lot of things, but it killed the NCPA like to nothing. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's a shame. College paintball was a blast. Yeah. I mean, I know it was a little bit on the, the downtrend, uh, in the yeah. year or two before COVID, but yeah, just with the rules with, uh, different student organizations. I mean, it was college by college, like some colleges weren't allowing any student orgs at all to meet for like a year. So it is a shame, but I want, I want to see it get back soon. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I've thought it's every, everybody thinks about it, I'm sure, but trying to get it started back at Miami because they were always so supportive of it and stuff. And, uh, it just, uh, their schools, obviously like Liberty that were, they had a field on campus. So it's out there. Like there's people that want to play it. We always had new guys and people like me that had never played before wanting to play. So I hope, uh, I hope it has a second life here at some point. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, so after your NCPA career was done and you moved here to Texas, uh, what teams have you played for since arriving here? So I haven't, I mean, we've been through a bunch of different names, but it's really the same group of guys that just has switched around for the first few years. We were Texas Phalanx, which is a huge program at the time. 
uh, run by Tim Peters, initially out of Fort Paintball, then uh, Cousins and Forney, and then um, we go somewhere after that. I don't even remember if we went somewhere after Cousins or not. I don't think so. We kind of fluttered out after that. But uh, obviously, if you're familiar with them, when I moved down here in 2015, probably through about 2018, it was a huge program. At one point, 60 or 70 committed players each weekend. Um, and I have no regrets on on that team choice. We uh, I made lifelong friends and guys I still play with when we play are, are all former Phalanx guys. They're pretty much all former Phalanx guys. So we're still out there. Yeah, Phalanx was a huge name, huge name back in the late 2010s. Uh, I remember yeah. uh, my first non-NCPA event was uh, World Cup 2018. I was uh, playing my first event with Austin or well, then it was San Antonio notorious. And mm-hmm. we, uh, we made the trip over to cousins. We got to scrimmage y'all. Uh, I think I, I got to meet you actually at that field. And, uh, it's, it's a little funny cause I, I think of that team and the two names that at least a lot of people know of in the paintball community now is yourself and Josh Lenhart, who, uh, is the, the man behind Yosh design. So a lot of entrepreneurship on that line. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh there there's a lot of a lot of good stories that came out of that Phalanx program in the paintball world. Obviously, you had some former pros and guys that went pro, and then AC Diesel took a whole bunch of our players towards the end. And Mark Baginski was was a divisional player for Phalanx and still plays with Diesel now. So, uh, Tim Tim definitely coached us up pretty good through the through the lower ranks, and a lot of those guys are still playing at a high level. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the legacy lives on 100%. So uh, since arriving in Texas, what are some things that have changed within the Texas scene for better or for worse? The single biggest thing is just paintball fit kind of appearing out of nowhere. I mean, when I when we moved, when I moved here in 15 and even into 16, it didn't exist. Um, and then when they did exist, I don't remember if that was 16, 17, 18, something in there. It was just the one, for anyone who's familiar with the field, the one kind of upper field, if you will, right? outside their main parking lot where the rec ball players are and that's how i remember fit initially and that's when we started going there um pretty regularly and they started gaining kind of this this uh elevated status if you will of fields in the air and kind of everybody wanted to go there even though at that time it was nowhere near the scale that it is now they've built just an unbelievable business um nothing but respect for all those guys and, and especially the lacal family but that that's the biggest change on the on the playing front for sure. Uh, obviously now Giant has gotten a bunch of money from California, pumped in from the Digidios. Uh really cool stuff being developed out there. I just kind of on a tangent. I think the one thing that's interesting is that we don't we still don't have like an elite rec ball field anywhere in North Texas. There's good ones, um, official uh in Forney and then DFW Adventure Park out by the Speedway are good rec fields, but when you look at some of the other stuff that's kind of scattered around the country, uh, it just it shocks me that, like you said at the beginning, we have so much paintball here, and it's often referred to as the mecca of paintball, and yet for rec ball, which is what gets a lot of people into it, there's no elite field. There's no field that's built a COD replica map, the stuff that gets people off their couches, uh, but that's that's a discussion for probably a whole nother podcast. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fields now. Um, there didn't used to be all that, like with a uh, giant come in. I mean, you obviously also have fun on the run in North uh, Dallas. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's such a wide variety now. I know that like, as far as like scenario goes, you've got uh official that's uh, in the area as well. Uh, and then as you make your way further South, like there's, once you kind of leave that Dallas, uh, like the greater Dallas area, you got to go all the way to Austin pretty much, which is a couple hours drive. Um, but it's incredible. Like you mentioned with the, the paintball fit coming out of nowhere, like those guys work their ass off to build that place. And they built it like, you know, brick by brick pretty much. And it's crazy. Uh, I tell people the story too, kind of on that whole, you asked what's changed uh, paintball fit. The players have changed a little bit too. They used to be, for anyone who played back then, a- AXBL, which is now the USXBL, they were the Apex Predators in D5 and D4. And if you drew the Apex Predators, you were like, oh, that's a 4-0 right there, guaranteed, right? And that's all the guys who are now paintball fit, the whole, all the LaCal brothers, like the how good those dudes have gotten and how much time they put into the sport is not matched by anyone, I don't think. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable what they've done in, in five years on personal levels. 
Oh yeah. And I think they're the best example of like, just if you truly dedicate yourself to something and you truly put in the time and the effort, like you will get the payout and you're seeing yeah. them right now. Like they're, yeah. I think in second place for the pro series, I think they're right behind blast camp, but yeah. those guys like they're, um, uh, you know, they've earned everything that they, that's come their way for sure. Yeah. Semi-pro World Cup is going to be wild on another note with uh, with 19 teams. That makes it a true round robin with no seating. So it's going to be a luck of the draw thing there. That'll uh, be crazy. I'm excited to watch it. So uh, you've talked a little bit about the uh, NCP and how you got your start up at Miami University in Ohio and uh, you played in that for a while. So whenever you came to Texas, did you notice any difference kind of between that scene and the scene here in Texas? Yeah, it was just, it's like comparing apples to oranges, honestly. It's interesting now because obviously level playing pro and the whole development of of the, their field, um, from what I've heard, changed Ohio paintball for the better. But when I was there, Ohio paintball was not big. It wasn't small. It was definitely bigger than some areas of the country. But like the most popular field was a guy's front yard called Escape. I mean, that's where like Tip and Effect used to go practice and where the guys who now play for level and struggle and some of these upper divisional teams that you see in the Ohio, Kentucky area now, and then down to Louisville Asylum would be kind of the only other field. Um, but it, it it was nothing even close to the scale of Texas paintball. And truthfully, a lot of the business's success is by accident that I just happened to move to, again, the mecca of paintball down here, um, not knowing. I mean, I took a corporate job. I didn't come down here owning Masons and doing all this stuff. So. Uh, it was just kind of luck of the draw that I ended up down here, but yeah, Texas paintball and you, you can't even compare it truthfully. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there's a reason why Texas is called the Mecca. I want to, and yeah. even then, like, I think Texas, the scene has a lot of growing that it can do to really be just like completely dominant. Like, uh, right now I'd say it's like between Texas, Florida, California, obviously like those three areas of the country. And then a little bit of the Northeast as well. Um, they've all kind of got like um like claims to claims to the top status uh in the country as far as uh yeah. you know scenes for paintball but i think texas uh at least looking at some of the stuff that's coming up in, in the next season and uh further on can really just uh break away from the pack yeah so um you talked about uh getting to play with phalanx and how big that program was i remember uh, like one of my first impressions was um, with watching Phalanx, like just how dominant they were, how big they were, I guess, uh, with among all of their different teams and continuously having the Sunday presence at NXL uh, in and then also like in D4 and D3 here locally. So uh, what was like the experience just getting to play with that big of a program? The size of the program was nice because we could, we could go to a, we could whatever field we wanted for that season to practice at. Basically, you always knew you were going to have not just ten guys, but twenty guys at every single practice. There was never a, a person issue, and anyone who's ever played paintball for more than five minutes knows that sometimes it's a struggle to get ten guys there on a practice day. So it's, you can't overstate how important it is. I don't think to have a big program like that in the sense of always having somebody to practice. Uh, comes with challenges too and you got to organize that many people of course uh everything's just on a different scale but uh it was it was a heck of an experience and the, the program was run extremely well for for all the years that guys were committed to it and stuff and um yeah i mean we we experienced a ton of success in 15 16 17 d3 one nxl dallas that roster if you look back at it now is like a cheat code for d3 it's pretty ridiculous how who was on that roster uh at D4, I was on the D4 line those first two years or first year, and we were like the number one or number two seed at every single NXL and just never did anything with it. And we still talk about all that to a, to this day, but that's uh, that's how it goes. So um, it was, I have nothing but but good memories of that time specifically. And, and it helped, it helped the business grow. It helped me make lifelong friends. A lot of those, I literally was talking to somebody, I posted on Facebook this morning, looking for somebody to sit at the shop and collect packages while we're at World Cup next week. And a teammate I hadn't talked to in four years from that program reached out and, hey, man, I could sit at the shop for you. No problem. So uh, it, it was that kind of program and a lot of a lot of guys that were pretty tight. 
Yeah, I remember that that season especially was what kind of made me realize like just how good and like how big the talent pool was in Texas. Like there was one event and I can't remember exactly which event it was. It was either like the 2017 or the 2018 season where like the in D3 X-Ball, the top four teams or three of the top four teams were all Texas teams. It was like, I think it was either Phalanx and Fit.com and FSU or something like that, or maybe TOG was in there somewhere, but just yep. uh, that that uh, season was like, oh, you know, Texas is where it's at for sure. Uh, so and it's, cool. it's cool to look at some of the NXL. This year has been a little bit of an anomaly, it seems like, but there still always seems to be really strong D3 and D4 teams that come out of North Texas. I mean, shut up, greed, obviously. Uh, one of my employees works for greed, so I can, I can shit talk mm-hmm. them a little bit, but, uh, we, we know they're all Bonner runs a heck of a program. Um, they probably should be playing at a higher level across the board, but they win pretty much everything they go to or finish on the podium. So, uh, it, it's just, I, I don't know if it's fit or North Texas in general or what it is, but we seem to always crank out D3 and D4 teams that are extremely successful. For sure. I mean, uh, it's still the case here. Like in D4 X ball, tribes in first place. They've won back to back in XLs. Um, in D3, you've got the Texas Cyclones who they're out of Houston, but you know, they're sitting in second place. And Shut Up We're Trying is uh, they're sitting in six for the season. Uh, and then, you know, look up at semi pro fit.com, second place in semi pro, just a few points behind. And then uh, Notorious is right there with them. Uh, so lots of Texas talent here. Uh, so. Out of all of the event series that you've played since you've been playing for a little while now, uh, you've played NCPA, AXBL, and then it turned into the USXBL. You played a couple of PSP events, NXL events, and then Bunkerfest, uh, just to name a few of them. Uh, which series has been your favorite to play and why? Such a tough question. I mean, the debate rages right between regional, local, national. They all have their merits for sure. Uh, I, I have... So far, I've had the most fun at Bunker Fest. Uh, I think what Chris and Under and his whole team is doing, I've never attended any event on any scale, national, local, regional, or anything in between, uh, that was run as smoothly. We've been to two of them now. Yeah, I guess they've only had two. The Round Rock inaugural one and then uh, New Orleans. So um, they were both just flawlessly executed, even though both of the teams I played on played like garbage. It, I still walked away from the event thinking like this was a heck of an experience. They treat their vendors well. Chris really leaves nothing to be desired uh, when it comes to the little things. And we know what they're doing. The payouts are great, all that stuff. Um, and I think I think what he's doing is forcing change, too. You're seeing it in other tournament series, increasing their prizes and guaranteeing prizes and things like that. Uh, so I think I, I've said for a long time that competition is good for everybody. Uh, there was a time when really no one else did what we do with the BST thing. And now there's a dozen or more little pop-up companies that, that are competitors. And people ask me all the time if I think it's a bad thing. And just like with the tournament series, I think it's great. I think I wake up every morning wanting to be better because I know that if I'm not, then somebody's going to pass me. And I think for the players and the playing experience at these events in the regional, the uh, regional, local, whatever you want to call them, series, it's only a good thing. Um, we'll see what Bunker Fest series next next year looks like and how that all fits in. But knowing Chris and seeing what they've done at the first two, that that's my choice right now. Um, I'd love to go out and play a West Coast event. Uh, I haven't been out there, but the team list is insane. I mean, 100 and, 150, 160 teams at what's considered a regional is, I mean, there, there were NXL minor events that didn't get half that this year. So uh, they're obviously doing something right. And then uh, you can't, I think the NXL is doing amazing things. I really do. People, people love to hate on it. People love to hate on everything uh, on the internet. But if you go to an NXL event and yeah, the prize packages could use a little tweaking here and there. Nick, I think we lost you for a second there. Um, oh, oh, sorry. There we go. Sorry, where where did I? Uh, you, you were saying like NXL price packages could use a little bit. Oh of yeah, and like, like I said, people love to hate on the NXL and hate on a lot of things online. But man, if you go to an NXL and you really start to look around at the infrastructure and how they run those things, uh, 
they're it, it really is a good thing for paintball for competitive paintball especially you and i talked before we went on kind of about marketing and a lack thereof i, I think the nxl is making huge moves in in the right direction to to make this a more marketable thing on a bigger scale uh and it's hard like there's there's no silver bullet to magically get us outside sponsorship or any of those big things that you know the key phrases everyone wants to always talk about but you got to put a good professional looking product out there before anyone will even consider it and i think the nxl is headed down a good road uh and as a vendor at nxl it's been phenomenal uh, the, the team they've assembled is has changed a little bit but the people they have in place now are really really receptive to feedback and and it it's been all good experiences this year at the NXLs, which is which is good because there, there's hiccups. There's always been hiccups, so uh, they'll keep improving. I think just based on discussions with, with the higher ups there, and uh, we'll try to do the same. Yeah, for sure. I I mean, just watching the NXL broadcasts and Go Sports, like you're seeing that uh, the product's getting better and better. I mean, I think they've uh, really figured out a good formula for the current bunker set that makes games a lot more exciting versus, you know, just getting to Sunday and you've got match scores of two to one, you know, the, the matches are still, you know, high scoring affairs, usually like 10 points or more that are scored. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's little things too, with them, you bring up go sports and how between them and the NXL, they requested that all the paint manufacturers start using bright shell paint which is kind of counter to anything anyone's ever done. But when you think about it, like paintball is hard enough to watch as an outside spectator. You don't need the paint to blend into the netting too. Like if you can at least see where the paint is, then, you know, you get that little bit extra uh, something to pay attention to and something to watch. And uh, I think, I, I think in some of the videos you see from the big videographers and stuff that came out from NXL Chicago, which is where the, the first event they had the bright shell requirement, you can see a lot more. You see the paint in the air on breakouts and when guys are making moves and stuff. And it, it just adds an element of production, I guess, that the dark shell never did because you can never see it on video, yeah, let alone absolutely. on a live stream. Absolutely. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the, the more progress I can make toward getting a, uh, you know, marketable thing, then finally we can start seeing, you know, maybe returning back to those early 2000s, mid 2000s days where you're actually getting some outside people looking in or able to advertise more to than just people that are already in. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, um, you know, we've talked a lot about your kind of career as a player and, you know, speaking of the bunker fest, you know, I know you're, you said your teams, uh, they, they did okay, but you know, obviously not what you were wanting. I think your, uh, your D four line that you were sponsoring the bar line, in D four X ball, your team was the only team to hand the Texas Titans a loss that event. Yeah. So yeah, so y'all are doing something right. Uh, so, do you have any current or future plans to compete as a player? I've been playing this year just mechanical though. Honestly, last year I got invited to play with Adrenaline at World Cup uh, mechanical mounds, having never played a mechanical event or a mounds event before, and I got hooked so fast it was like getting back into paintball for the first time. Um, and it spurred something when the NXL announced they were going to do a seven man Mac all season long that we should do that. Like, that'll be fun if we're there and we're going to have guys anyways, like let's sign up for this. I'll, I'll the company, the business will sponsor it. We kind of hooked up with max sportswear, another North Texas apparel team and uh, apparel company, excuse me. And we said, all right, let's do this thing. Let's throw a line together and, and have some fun on Sunday at NXL Dallas. And next thing you know, we're walking away with the trophy. So, uh, that came with, with entry to the next one. And we won that one too. So now we, uh, we're in the classic cup at, um, at world cup here playing for first place and 12 grand. So, uh, so I can't ever fully retire. I've tried to retire like a half dozen times mm -hmm. and I keep getting stuck back in one way or another. So, uh, my guys, some of my best friends still are playing X ball and I'm not going to say I'll never play X ball again, but I'm having a blast just playing mech when I can right now. So a lot of, a lot of other things and, Good things to focus on outside the sport so i uh i play when i can and when i want to and it's nice yeah it's funny you you bring up the whole mech thing uh the episode that i had last night was with uh james cobb who is the uh, team captain for valhalla and mm -hmm. he's been like super big and getting the mech movement going in texas again uh so yeah that's uh that's who we beat at nxl dallas on Sunday for first <laughs> yeah, yeah his team's Our been killing month. it uh, they, they were really cool. I, the coolest part honestly is is nxl like popped up this seven man thing without really 
telling anyone about it or really putting any rules on paper. Uh, so every event has been on a different field. Like at Dallas, we just played seven man on the regular five man X ball field, which was wild. And then at, uh, Chicago, we played seven man on the 10 man field. So like complete opposite of Dallas. And then at world cup, seven man's on the mounds field. So you kind of get, it's almost like playing organized rec ball and there just happens to be $12,000 first place prize at the end of it. So, uh, it's also nice because. Both of my employees, Adam and Nate, play and they're good mech players. And we have to work the booth. That's the other thing. Like we're extremely busy at these at the NXL events. So trying to play X Ball is just it's hard. It's really, really hard. Uh, but playing mech, you play one point, you got an hour, we can run back to the booth, play another point, and it's all done in one day. So it, it just goes back. I don't want to sound like I'm just blowing smoke up the NXL or whatever, but I, I think they're doing great things with all these different formats and one day type things. And it, it's just really cool. It's uh it world cup's going to be insane this year. Oh yeah. I mean, look at D4, there's 98 teams in D4 X. Yeah. Like that's insane. Yeah. Like, you're going to, you're going to get through prelims and then you may have five, you may have six rounds of playoffs before you get yeah. to the finals. It's going to be crazy. Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, we talked about your uh, career as a player. Now let's talk about, you know, your your main name now, which is uh, you're most known as being, you know, the namesake for Mason's PB, which is a paintball website. And now it's a storefront uh, that uh, y'all deal in new and uh, use paintball markers and equipment. So how did you get your start in this uh, kind of buy, sell, trade area? Crazy. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it, uh, it all honestly happened on accident. So, uh, Back at Miami, when I said I was walking around and decided I would sign up for the club paintball team, the first thing I had to do was buy my own gear. Um, so Rob, who I mentioned before, told me to head to eBay. At the time, it was eBay or PB Nation. And if you weren't a paintball player, PB Nation was a terrifying place. Uh, so went to eBay, bought the first setup I could find, which happened to be a gloss burnt orange Shocker NXT. Anyone out there has one, I want one back. I haven't seen one since I sold mine, and that was a mistake. So uh bought that showed up to the first practice rob was like this doesn't have the right firing modes you got to get something different so i put the whole setup back on ebay and it sold for like 20 dollars more than i bought it for and i was like i can do this 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 can be beer money right each week mm -hmm. and so throughout all of i mean that was freshman year so throughout all of college it was always just one or two guns at a time really and then maybe senior year i got up to four or five guns uh and it was that was all of my money. Like I used every dollar I had to buy paintball guns and beer at the bar and nothing else. Um, I would buy, I tell the story, my mom would never let me live this down, but my parents used to give me a little bit of money each week for food instead of doing like a university meal plan. So instead of spending the money they gave me on like good food, I would go to Walmart and buy clearance food so that I had more money to buy paintball guns. Um, and so that was how, like, I grew from one to two guns and two to four guns. But it really wasn't until I moved down here to Texas that uh, that things took off. And in 2015, I still probably only had six or seven guns. Like, I didn't have this many guns for this for a really long time, even through 2017. And then I started a. I said I was working a corporate job, so I started to get a regular paycheck and stuff, and used all of that again, every dollar that wasn't on rent, now living on my own too. To more paintball guns and i had a very understanding first roommate here uh shout out to kelly um who let me just start stockpiling stuff in our tiny little apartment um and it just grew organically honestly i kind of started to make a name on pv nation and then obviously the facebook groups launched a whole new world uh when that kind of came to be probably 16 17 was when they started to get popular and it went from five guns to 10 guns to 20 guns to 100 guns and it just it was always organic. I never had one major takeover. Uh, although anyone who is familiar with PB Nation knows the OG guy to do this was a guy whose username was Mini Ben. And his real name was Ben Diebold. Diebold? Diebold? He's a professional poker player now, but he was the guy who always had the threads that were sticky to the top that everybody wanted to look at because he had the coolest guns, all the pro guns, everything. And he had 20 or 30 of them at a time. Well, when Ben decided he wanted to be a professional poker player, he sold me all of his leftover inventory in probably 2018. That might have been 20 guns or so, and that like doubled the inventory I had at the time. So that was like a huge 
I was terrified. I didn't know if I could sell that many paintball guns. I didn't know anything on how to operate on that scale. I barely had room for that many paintball guns. And then uh, things just honestly kept going well. And I did this by myself until 20, mid-2019 probably. And then that roommate I told you about, Kelly, uh, he started to help me occasionally. Like It got to the point where I could no longer go on vacation and just not have somebody doing things because we were starting to get orders regularly and people wanted things and packages were arriving and going out and all that good stuff that comes with growing a business, I guess. And uh, after that, at some point, my house started bursting at the seams. And uh, that's when the shop discussion started. And that was terrifying because I swore forever that I never wanted to do brick and mortar ever. Mm -hmm. uh, online was my niche. I kind of, we own the online space for a long time. Trade My Gun was there, but their site looks like it's 40 years old and it's hard to navigate. and you didn't really know what you were getting all the time. Um, and none of these other BST websites existed. So I said, let's do this thing right. Let's build a good looking website. And now I look back at my first website and it it like pains me to look at it. I think that was like a professional offering. Um, but it, I, I never wanted to move into brick and mortar. And then at some point I realized I didn't have a choice. It was either buy a storage unit to put all this stuff in or just to open a store. Uh, and I don't like to half-ass anything that I do. So instead of a little counter with a big warehouse, we decided to go 50-50 on a big retail front with a warehouse in the back. And we've already outgrown this. So I don't, next two years might be a little rough here, but uh, we're, we're doing good things. So I got a heck of a team though. I should probably shout out Adam Pender and Nate DeMott. Uh, my two employees since day one, definitely couldn't do any of this without them. Uh, Alex Mott at Contact Paintball works for us still uh handles some of our new manufacturer interactions and stuff but uh he he was instrumental especially when we expanded to brick and mortar that's when the new product can really start to flow right i had always done used and that's all i knew i knew the used market as well as anyone on the planet but new was foreign to me i didn't know what kind of volume to expect i didn't know if people even paid for new guns um so that was alex kind of showed me the ropes there and and got us started on the right foot for sure and now, uh, that's our, our biggest area of expansion for sure is trying to have all the newest and coolest stuff up. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's been cool, especially for me since, uh, like 2015 was when I got my start in, uh, the paintball scene. And that's about when you started like really growing like Facebook, especially, and you, you seem to be like one of the first people, uh, to really like kind of take advantage and put your name out there on, on these Facebook buy, sell, trade stuff, uh, and I remember like 2017, uh, my 21st birthday, I actually, uh, had bought a, uh, marker from you. It was a stormtrooper CS one. And, um, like, because it was like my first ever thing with PayPal, I had never used it before. Um, it like some, I, I forget what it is with PayPal, but like, because I paired it with like a bank account instead of a card, it, it said like, it was, it was like pending the payment until the sh yeah. like the couple yep. of days until it cleared or whatever. And you would, right. you would just like send it to me anyway. And you, you, uh, you know, once the payment cleared, you were like, Oh yeah, it, I shipped it a couple of days ago. It should be there today. Yeah. That was, that was a really, really good experience. Uh, getting to interact with you. I, I think that's part of it. And it, again, going back to what I said, it's cool to see some of these newer newer pop-up websites and stuff, the ones that are doing it right. And there's guys that are, that I've met and know that are, they're good people. And that's the biggest thing is it's like the whole, it's almost like a used car dealership, like used car dealerships in the nineties and thousands and stuff were so slimy. And you see all these movie scenes and stuff that are pretty accurate to what they really were. Paintball wasn't that much different. Like it was kind of grimy if you were doing the BST stuff through PB nation and you just didn't really know who you were working with. Facebook obviously brought a lot more transparency. And I, I just saw an opening for what people had done before. This isn't a new concept. I don't like pretend to be some revolutionary that came up with this. Like this has existed for a long time. It's just that people weren't doing it what I thought was the right way. And that was professionally and and putting full effort into it where it like it, it, we charge a premium for our, for our products, for our used products. And I believe that that should come with the service and the customer service and the follow up and all those things that if you're going to do that, if you're going to sell luxury cars as a used car dealer, you better have the mechanics and the salespeople to back it up. You can't 
you know, it's, we live in the internet age. Now people have options. They're not stuck to whatever their local store is. So, uh, we, we have to differentiate somehow. And I drill it into my guys constantly that we all sell the same products. Um, so how are, how are we going to differentiate from other stores? And it's, uh, it's personal touches. Like what you just mentioned, I try to do stuff like that as frequently as, as we can within reason, obviously. Um, and then just being, being visible, being at the events and talking to players and those are my customers. You know, that's, there's these companies that just kind of hide in the background. Half these guys don't even play paintball. And that's like my biggest pet peeve is that they're here buying and selling and trading in our community and they haven't picked up a gun more than five times in their entire life. So that's a, that's a whole, whole nother thing. But, uh, I, I just, there's a way I see fit to do these things and to do business. And, and I, I hope other people agree with it. And I think the growth of our company shows that they do. So I hope every morning we can wake up and be better for, for the sport, for the people that, that are our customers now and for the people that will be in the future. Um, it's just, it, it takes more effort. That's like, you want to break it down. That that's what it just takes a little extra effort. Yeah. I mean, we, I uh, can clearly see that with, uh, your reputation and the quality of your service and your products and, uh, now like you've, you've gone from just doing things out of your apartment and now you're like a, a retailer for these major companies. Like I think one of the earliest ones that you started retailing for was infamous. Uh, and now you're also like, you're doing eclipse, you're doing carbon new, uh, you're doing uh, a whole bunch of other, uh, stuff now. Like what, what are all the companies that you retail for now? We've got just about everybody. The last one kind of mostly because there's a lot of competition in North Texas specifically was GI core. Um, but we've got, we got them on board too. We don't carry a ton of their stuff right now. Um, but all the, all the real popular stuff, we got all the masks, obviously pro flexes, grills, all that good stuff, lenses for all them. Um, looking around trying to think what else we're huge. We got a ton of HK army stuff here because nobody else in North Texas is HK infamous is huge. Carbon's huge. Uh, obviously planet eclipse is, is massive wallet LV twos and some leftover fossils and stuff up there uh die's been insanely supportive we don't sell anything we don't sell more of anything than dsr pluses right now it's a wild amount of volume of dsr pluses uh uh, ninja virtue bunker kings field one trying to think if there's anyone we don't have i think we have an inception account but i don't order enough from them i probably should order more especially with how cool their emacs are but Mm. if there's a brand out there we're we're a dealer for them so uh it's it's that's been fun. That's like my big challenge with the the brick and mortar thing is this is a whole new world for me. I've been doing the used stuff for over a decade now, but I'm a rookie when it comes to the new stuff. So, uh, it's, it's really cool to, to get, uh, to get the newest, the latest and greatest. And every once in a while I'll be on the ends of the new stuff coming out. So. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about your transition to uh, brick and mortar. I mean, you've, you've mostly been doing stuff online. Like that's where you, uh, cut your teeth, where you made your name. Um, so, not only are you in the brick and mortar stuff, but now you're more and more, you're bringing mobile units out to events and event series. Uh, so do you feel like having these physical locations, uh, have they helped you out a lot? Are you seeing an increase in traffic or anything? Or are you still pretty much just doing everything online? Yeah, I could have never imagined the impact the vendor stuff would have at NXL. Um, the, I remember thinking after the very first event, which was NXL Dallas last year, which was a minor. So that was where it was only d3 and down d3 and yeah d3 and lower so you didn't even have your upper divisionals or your pros or anything and just the the sales and the feedback we did out of that booth which i look back on now was like barely held together (laughs) we've learned a lot since then um uh, you can't even you can't fathom the impact that that stuff had the store's shockingly good i mean it's nice to have the space of course uh, my guys have to have a place to come in and work and all that. Uh, but we, I don't do a lot of marketing because it's not something I'm good at, just to be honest, with local SEO online, trying to get people to walk through the front door. But we opened almost exactly a little over a year ago now, a year and a few weeks. And every week we steadily get another, more people coming through the door. So I know the word of mouth's getting around just like how I grew online, truthfully. It was never running ads or anything. So maybe we'll get there one day, maybe we won't, but we get a lot of traffic now and and we more, more importantly, we get a lot of returning customers. So I know that the customers that come in here like it and we get a lot of good feedback. So, uh, just 
like I continue to try to improve our website and our offerings online. I'm going to do the exact same thing in store here now that now that we've got it. So you heard me say earlier, we're busting at the seams here already. So uh, I'm in a two year lease, two more years of a lease in this spot. Um, but we'll see. Maybe there's there's expansion coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, so kind of along those lines, uh, do you have any like upcoming projects or news for uh, for the store that you'd like to share? Nothing huge. We do need to hire. So I'm going to use this to plug a job opening. Um, I need a full time staff guide down here in Dallas. Uh, we are about 15 minutes north of downtown Dallas in Richardson, Texas, uh, near Plano, Frisco, all the, the popular cities that you might see online uh it's a salary job we've got health insurance dental insurance vision insurance if you want it all of it comes with the territory now if if i want to say we're running a more professional business then i want to treat my employees like real employees and not like high school kids considered a death so uh as nate and adam can attest to it's it's stressful but it's not just paintball it's it's a growing rapidly growing start we're a little past the startup stage but that's essentially what it is it's still a very small business in the scheme of things and that means there's a lot of room for upward growth uh but that comes with a lot of responsibility and you got to be you got to be able to to focus on a bunch of things at once and and it comes with its perks too so uh i'll be posting after world cup looking for people uh who would like to interview so um keep an eye on facebook and our website and i'll try to blast it out there as best i can but we're we're looking to hire at least one more person again. So all good things. Cool, man. Uh, so yeah, if you're in the Dallas area or nearby, uh, and you're looking to get a job in the paintball industry, Nick's your guy, he's got an opening. So, uh, uh, be on the lookout for that on his pages. Uh, real quick, everybody in the chat, we do got quite a few people in there. Uh, if you got something that you want to ask Nick, uh, go ahead and get your question in the chat. Now we're about to come towards the end. So you got a minute or two left to get your questions in. Uh, so Nick, this is a question that I ask everybody that comes on the show just to help me. Like, who do I not know about? Who does the rest of Texas not know about? And who do I need to get on the show next? So are there any Texas based teams, players, brands, projects, or anything in Texas that have caught your attention lately? So, uh, if the rest of Texas doesn't know about them, who does Texas need to know about? That's a tough one. Um, boy, I, I'm trying to think of people you haven't already talked to or that I know you would have already talked to. So I feel like I'm like near the bottom of that uh, importance list here in Texas. So uh, I mentioned Max. We we work real closely with with Charles Dean at Max. He used to be the head designer at Social Paintball, uh, awesome apparel and stuff like that. Charles is a great guy. Uh, hopefully, if you eventually get him on the show, we'll have a giant trophy and twelve thousand dollars from our uh, our Classic Cup victory to show off. But uh, other than that, I. I feel like you're talking to talking to all the right people. I think I don't. There's something interesting to me about semi-pro players. Always, they just like they don't have quite the uh, I don't even know what the right word is. They don't have the requirements of a pro player necessarily. You know, they got to feel like they got to plug all their sponsors constantly and and all that stuff. I enjoy watching and listening to semi-pro players more than anything. So pick a semi-pro guy from any roster. I can only imagine how entertaining Mark Franz would be if you wanted to sit down with him for an hour. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know if I could survive an hour with Mark Franz. Uh, so that that one could be fun, but I, I think there's a lot of people uh, that that could that could comment in the semi pro world too. That would just be uh, would be fun to to talk to. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've I've gotten a few already. I've gotten uh, British from FSU. I've gotten Colt Lacow from Fit.com. Yeah. I got I got to get more of those guys on. I mean, there's just yeah. so many to talk to. I know FSU just uh, recently picked up Ivan Gonzalez from uh, Sacramento DMG to kind of fill in for their snake. So uh, a lot of guys that I can uh, definitely look to talk to on on yeah. semi pro. There's a lot of people in Texas. Uh, cool. So we got, uh, we got two questions in the chat. It looks like, uh, most of them are just trolling you, but you know what? We'll send them anyway. So one question cool. is from, uh, minion PB on Twitch. His question is how did you do in the Halloween contest? Okay. Minion PB is, uh, Adam Pender, my employee. <laughs> so he knows the answer to this. And like you said, um, Halloween's kind of my thing. So mm -hmm. We go all out each year at my house decorating and uh, we tied for third in the neighborhood this year. So that was an extremely disappointing finish. 
All right. Uh, another question is uh, his name is Changing Lanes on Twitch. That's actually one of my teammates on the Texas Titans. Uh, his question is who convinced Nick to sponsor those hooligans on Ultra? Uh, I don't know. I, I literally <laughs> do not know how I got roped into that one. Um, one of my best friends, David Bible, kind of got scooped up and uh, I, I don't know. I don't even have an answer for that question. The next thing, David's like, hey, we need 30 cases of paint for practice this weekend. I was like, well, all right, I guess throw me on your jerseys and <laughs> here we go. So uh, they're, they're all really, really good dudes as I've gotten to know some of those guys or all of those guys now over the, the last year, year and a half. Um, I told you we had bounced between a whole bunch of names, but it's that same group of guys, no matter what we call ourselves. Uh, but they're they're good people and, uh, and good paintball players. So Yeah, for sure. All right, and last question from the chat is, uh, will Ultra be doing five-man X-Ball or strictly Mac next season? Uh, Ultra's playing X ball at cup. So I think at this point we've kind of reserved that, like the ultra name again, I am not like, I don't run ultra. I don't want it to sound like I do. I'm not even on the roster. I just give them practice paint basically. So, um, I think they're going to keep that ultra name as an X ball only kind of thing. We've kind of used maxed, uh, Charles, the company and Mason's PV.com as uh as mech name but it's all all overlap and whatever the names are maybe we'll actually try to formalize this thing next year and uh on the mech side on the mech side and come up with a real team name or something i don't know we'll see if we keep winning i'm not changing the name i'm kind of superstitious so mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah you can't you can't take away the winning right right i mean we're we're undefeated as max so why would we change our name mm -hmm. all right uh one more question that i just thought of is um yeah. As far as uh, Mason's the the store and future plans, you, would you ever consider like kind of branching into being a paint distributor? Yeah, it's a space thing. We had actually, I mean, this is all pre-COVID, pre-store signing, all that stuff. We were in talks with a major paint manufacturer to be the distributor for the south, all of Southwest, not just Texas, but into Arizona and Oklahoma and everything down here. Um, and then COVID just totally changed that. So uh never say never I, I we stock hk paint right now um so does paintball gateway in arlington i know that so they kind of house it all and truthfully i don't have space for it so i've never really pushed the issue but um yeah i like anything else paints a a huge obviously it's the, the biggest consumable or the only consumable in the sport so um if we can we can push paint out to local teams and stuff i will take a minute to self-plug here and if you are a team, North Texas team, and you bring your own paint to practice or you want to start bringing your own paint to practice, we have some pretty crazy deals in store. I can't talk about them online or anything, obviously, but we uh, every time a team comes in here, they walk out with a lot of paint. So I know I know our prices are pretty good. Uh, and we rip through paint pretty frequently, so we got fresh stuff in all the time, which is really nice. So, uh, yeah, hopefully one day we got a whole warehouse full of paint, and I would love nothing more than to stock all the brands and all the – grades and all the levels and like guys shoot whatever they want but uh right now it's it's just hk great all right well uh nick that does it for our time thank you so much for coming on uh, do you have any last shout outs or things you'd like to say before we sign off no we uh we hit on all the the companies that we rep and stuff then i got to shout out my employees so uh this was fun man thanks for having me yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Uh, so y'all in the chat, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to go follow Nick. That's at Mason's PB on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, what other guests would you like to see on the show? Be sure to leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. The show goes live weekly here on twitch.tv slash in the pits paintball podcast. Recordings are posted to YouTube, Amazon, Apple podcasts, and Spotify the next day. Shout out to my partners and sponsors, FU Athletics, uh, get that shot, paintball kumite, and compete. Uh, so we will see you all. Uh, we're not going to have a live broadcast next week. Obviously, we'll be at World Cup. Uh, so we'll see you in two weeks. We're going to have episode 22 with Christian Woodmancy. He is currently on the Energy Elite roster, uh, formerly of AC Dallas last year. So uh, I know he's, he's based up in Philly, but played with the Texas team for one event. So we're going to call him a Texan so he can get on the show. All right, Nick, uh, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, man. See you at World Cup. All right. Yeah. See you there.